blessings to the tribe and peace to the family. On this particular session, I want us to look at how does the gift of a seer manifest. Right? I want to help those of you who uh, you think, you feel God is calling you as a seer. Right? How does the gift operate? How does it manifest? How does the gift show itself up? Okay, hope you're all doing okay. I want you to go ahead and like this video and share it forward. So God bless you. I want us to turn to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 13, right? For some time now, um, I, I have spoken about the subject of prophets and seers. In fact, I have an entire playlist um, here on my YouTube channel that I did on, on the secrets of seers or rather prophets and seers in the beginning, right? And I hope someone's finally getting it because uh, the assumption that that um, prophets are seers actually still persists. And this is going to hinder a lot of you prophets who are watching me. Because being a prophet doesn't necessarily mean you are a seer. Being a prophet doesn't necessarily mean you are called to operate in the visual dimension. You see? You can be genuinely called as a prophet and not operate in the visual dimension. Right? So that is to say, you can be a prophet and not have visions. You can be a prophet and and and, and not have dreams the way a seer would have dreams. You might have your dreams there and here, but you will not have dreams like a seer would have dreams. Right? And and what you must understand here is that no none is better than the other. These two prophetic anointings, they are designed to complement each other. Right? Not that one who sees is better than one than, than the one who only hears. Or the one who hears is better than the one who sees. Right? And then there are also individuals in the body of Christ wherein you will find the person embodies both anointings they can both see they can see in the spirit and they can hear they are people like that but it doesn't necessarily mean everyone's gonna be like that this is why it's important when you learn from a man of god a woman of god a prophet if you are called in the, into the prophetic it's important to know that you you are not called to be them you're probably not even called to be like them there's certain things that you need to learn from them, but your gift is going to operate uniquely. You're going to be uniquely. And at the end of the day, you have, to be, you have to be yourself. But there are things you must learn from others. There are things you must receive from others. Right? So, imagine if you are mentored by Moses. And Moses tells you that his story of how he was called into the ministry. And he starts talking about the burning bush experience, how the angel of the Lord appeared to him and whatnot. Now, should Joshua also expect the Lord to speak to him through an angel and the burning bush experience? That's not going to happen. It might, it might happen, but probably wouldn't. It, it's, it's not going to happen. Right? So Joshua is called just as Moses is called, but his calling is different from that of Moses. As much as he was sitting under Moses, as much as he is... He's a successor uh, of Moses, but he, his, 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 his ministry is going to be slightly different from that of Moses. You see, I mean, look at the ministry of Elisha, for an example. He said under Elijah. But are you aware that the ministry of Elisha was actually different from the ministry of, 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 of Elijah? I mean, Elisha actually ministered not only to Israel and the kings of Israel. He even ministered to uh, foreign nations. Nations that were not part of the covenants of Israel. He, the scope, the extent of his ministry. You, you know. So while Elijah was so focused within Israel, Elisha, his, his mantle, his, his rather, he, the scope of his assignment extended beyond just Israel. So if Elisha wanted to mimic very closely and do everything exactly like Elisha was do, Elijah, Elijah was doing. He was going to miss the purpose of God. He was going to miss some of the things that God wanted him to do for him. You see? So now, we're back at this um, subject of seer. So we're talking about how to uh, how does the gift of, of a seer manifest. That's what, that's what we're talking about. Now, 
let's look at the book of Deuteronomy 13 verse 1. It says, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, you see that? And give it thee a sign or a wonder. Now, I wanted to, to, see, to, to check this out. You, you have two things here. It says, if there arise among you an abbey or a dreamer of dreams, which is a seer. See, the Bible, if, 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 if God was talking about the same thing here when he's talking about the nabi and the dreamer of dreams, the prophet and the dreamer of dreams, there was no need for the, for the Bible to say, um, uh, if there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams. Right? So, these are two prophetic anointings. One is auditory, one is visual. So, the Nabi is an inspired hearer. The Nabi, the prophet, is an inspired speaker. The Nabi is an inspired teacher. The Nabi is an inspired preacher. Right? So, the Nabi can have the gift of prophecy and prophesy. The Nabi can have words of knowledge and stuff because here's a harder thing. Not everything when, when, when we prophesy, it's not that everything is coming at the, in a visual, in, 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 at the visual level. And not everything is coming on an, on an audio level. Some things, they come as thoughts. Like words of knowledge, mostly they come to the mind like a thought. Right? Because, the, because God can speak at the thought level. <laughs> and for you to grow in there, you have to learn how to distinguish between your own thoughts and thoughts that are coming to you. Thoughts that are imposing themselves on you as you are ministering. Okay? So, but what I want to show you here is, and what I want to teach you is this. One can be a prophet without the visual dimension. So one can be a nabi. So a prophet, he, he will prophesy. One said to me, someone, uh, I, I wrote about, some, about this on Facebook, something along this line. And someone commented and said, so how is, how is that person going to be a prophet if they can't see in the spirit? And the question sometimes that people ask, you know, they reveal how much people don't know about the prophetic or how much people don't really know what the prophetic is all about or being a prophet is all about. Being a prophet, it's all about being God's spoke person. You speak on behalf of God. That's a prophet. You're an official spoke person of God. That's a prophet. And as an official spoke person, you might deliver the message through a word of prophecy you might have a message and deliver it through preaching. You might have a message and deliver it through uh, uh, teaching. You might have a message and deliver it through acting it out. Like the prophets of old, they'll sometimes act the word. Like Isaiah. You understand? So they, there's going to be different mediums through which you communicate or you speak on behalf of God. But, but the main point is that you are an official spokesperson. You are, you are, you are, you are, God chose you that you are going to speak on my behalf. So this is what we mean. So in other words, one could become a prophet and they might not prophesy. They might just teach the word and preach and heal the sick and perform miracles. Because speaking on behalf of God is not limited to verbal communication. One can communicate through signs and wonders on behalf of, on behalf of God. One, uh, again, it's not limited to just prophecy. You know, that says the Lord. One can speak, can be a spokesperson and, and use preaching as a medium of communication. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, I'm not saying you, because, you know, some people reject these things. Not because they, 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 they don't understand what is it I'm saying. It's because they feel like, okay, if I accept this, maybe this is disqualifying me from seeing in the spirit this is disqualifying me from hearing in the spirit you know i don't want to be a prophet who can who communicates through just preaching i want to prophesy i want to call names <laughs> you understand i understand all of that so i'm not saying to you you won't be able to do that but i want you to i want you to first understand what we mean by prophet because if you understand that then it then you will understand how the seer gift really operates so we have the Nabi, um, if there arise among you a prophet, a Nabi, right? Or a dream of dreams, this is a seer, it's a visual, it's a, it's a visual dimension, right? So when the Lord speaks to the prophet, 
the prophet becomes an inspired hearer. He becomes an inspired speaker. He prophesies through hearing the prophet. Then, of course, there are certain prophets who are Nabi prophets, but they are not raw Nabi prophets. They also have the touch of the sea anointing. So this will be a prophet who is prophesying mostly as a Nabi, but they keep on having dreams and visions. So, you know, there's a synergy of the, of the seer and the Nabi dimension upon their lives. But then there are certain prophets who will only prophesy through hearing. <laughs> right? Because the, and then because when we, 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 we talk about the seer now, I want to get this. When we now talk about the seer, the seer, all seers are prophets, but not all prophets are seers. All seers, they are prophets, but not all prophets are seers. So they are all prophets, but they are not all seers. So they are prophets who can see. They are prophets who can't see. They can only hear. And I hope someone is getting it. You get it? So imagine if you are called. Right now, you are frustrated. You, are, you, you have been prophesied again and again that God has called you as a prophet. But you are frustrated by the fact that you don't see anything at night when you're sleeping. When you pray and stay up at night, you don't see visions. When you minister, you stand in front of people, you don't see anything. And that is getting to you. And the real problem here is that you, the moment you receive prophetic words and stuff, you made an assumption that you are called to become a seer. You never seeked out. You never seeked the Lord to find out that, okay, now that I know you are calling me as a prophet, are you calling me as an, just as a Nabi prophet? Or are you also calling me to operate in the seer dimension? Because all seers are prophets, but not all prophets are, are, see, are seers. So if all seers, they are prophets, but not all prophets are seers, not all prophets. So the implication, they are all prophets, but they are prophets who can see. They are prophets who operate in the visual dimension. They are prophets who are not called to operate in the visual dimension. They are just called to operate in the auditory dimension. So if you don't understand that, and moreover, I accept it if God's calling you to operate as a, as a hearer, you won't have a problem because you're going to wait for the Lord to speak to you in the visual dimension. You are not going to see anything. And the more you follow and listen to other prophets who operate in the visual dimension, it's going to discourage you. It's going to, first you're going to feel desperate. Eventually you're going to just get discouraged because you are trying to pursue something that's not yours. So, if he's calling you as a prophet and you're not to operate in, in the, in the dimension, visual dimension, then embrace the auditory dimension. Become good in hearing. Become good in, in, in prophesying. Right? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, hearers and seers, they are called to do the same thing. To, to, to receive information from the Lord and give it to people, give it to villages, towns and cities and nations. You understand? That, that's, that's it. They... they but they are called to see things or rather to hear, to receive information. Let me put it that way. Because a seer, when he receives some information from the Lord, he's going to get it in a visual in, in, in a visual way. So a, a, a seer is going to have dreams. A seer is, a seer, a seer is going to have dreams. A seer is going to have his visions. But a Nabi prophet is going to be hearing. A Nabi prophet is going to be hearing. A Nabi prophet is going to be hearing. So they might be receiving, let's say, the same information for the same city or for the same nation, but they're not going to receive it the same way. The one who's called to operate in the visual dimension is going to receive it uh, as a dream or as a vision. The one who's been called to, uh, as, uh, to operate in the auditory dimension is going to receive it as he, uh, through the sense of hearing. In the same, but they are receiving the same thing. Then they communicate it differently. None is better than the other. They are both meant to complement each other. So the important thing is you need to know whether, when as a prophet, you need to know if, if are you just called to receive information through um, 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 the auditory dimension or you're also called to have dreams and visions and stuff. So this, this is why here we're getting into the main message now or... Uh, uh, um, how does the, the, the seer gift manifest itself? Right? So number one, let me close my Bible. Number one, the seer gift, the seer gift uh, uh, manifests itself in dreams, through dreams. Right? 
someone who is a seer, dreams becomes their province. Dreams becomes their uh, their habitant. Dreams becomes their tabernacle. You understand? So these are people who can't help it but dream. Right? This is this this is where they live. This is their place. They are visual people. You understand? So and that's one way you can know that um, you're being called as a seer. You, you know, you have lots of dreams. You're just a dreaming person. Right? Some of your dreams, of course, they might be straightforward dreams. Some of your dreams might be symbolic dreams that require interpretation. But the key point now I'm trying to communicate is that you receive communication through visuals. That was one, the first sign that you um, you have been called into to operate to operate in the visual dimension or rather in the seer dimension. Number two, uh, second second sign that you are being called or or rather how the gift of seer operates is uh, manifests itself is visions. Okay, and when I'm talking about visions, I'm talking about open visions for an example. And open visions are visions that you see with your natural eyes. And oftentimes, when you see open visions, you don't know you are seeing a vision until it disappears. You understand? So because an open vision will incorporate everything in your space. It will be like a real life event. Like something that's taking place in real time. Everything. If... When you saw the vision, there was wind. The wind is going to be in the vision. If you were with someone, that person is going to be there in the, in the vision. If there was music playing, you know, seeing an open vision, you're going to still hear that sound in that vision. The only time you're going to, you're going to know it's not a vision is when it disappears. Like when, the, when an angel of the Lord took Peter out of prison. It's when now he was out of prison, you know, and he realized that, okay, uh, this is not a vision. Because he thought to himself, I'm seeing a vision. Because he was, he was accustomed to seeing visions that integrate everything. Okay, I'm seeing myself in prison and stuff. And the angel of the Lord is here. So he's thinking, maybe the angel of the Lord is visiting me or God's communicating to me. So this is a vision. But in this case, Peter was not actually seeing an open vision. It was taking place literally. The angel of the Lord was delivering him. But, but the, the principle here or the concept there is that Peter knew that visions would incorporate themselves i've seen visions like that they're beautiful they're extraordinary i think these are some of the visions that made me never to doubt the prophetic even in the beginning you know because the lord when he introduced me to the prophetic introduced me to the prophetic through open visions you understand so even as i was growing and pursuing the prophetic and stuff i knew the prophetic exists because i had experienced it firsthand not just following, watching prophets and stuff, but I, I, I have experienced it firsthand. You get it? So and then we have visions that you see through your mind's eye, you know, like in, like in the form of imagination, the way you would imagine thing, something. You're not seeing it external, you're seeing it inside yourself. So you, you, the Holy Spirit can use your, your imagination. But in this case, it's not you imagining things. It's the Holy Spirit imposing things on the screen of your mind's eye. You begin to see those things in the inside of yourself. It's another form or type of a vision. Right? And then the last one, it's uh, perceptions or rather mental impressions. Let me put it this way. Mental impression is pictures. You know, so normally they are static. They are... It's nothing moving, it's nothing unfolding. You know, you're just seeing a picture of a someone, a picture of something and stuff. All of these three things, they signify that you, you have the seer gifting. You understand? So but you, you might find that you're a prophet, God's called you as a prophet. You go to bed, you wake up in the morning, no dream. You stay up, pray the whole night, no visions. You understand? You pray in intercession, you are doing, even when you dream, you dream here and there.